My name is Jeanette James, and I am part of the Center of Medicaid and CHIP Services in the Data and Systems Group under the leadership of Jessica Kahn and Deborah Stewart. I work in the Division of Operations and Technical Services under the leadership of Donna Kaufman. Our division assists the business components in developing and providing training and assistance to the Mac Pro user community. Today, our Mac Pro training will cover the Mac Pro roles training for CMS under the quality measure reporting. I will now welcome Megan Thomas to provide an overview on today's training. Thanks so much, Jeanette. So good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from us today. Uh, my name is Megan Thomas, and I'm a technical director in the Division of Quality and Health Outcomes in CMCS. So on behalf of CMCS, I want to welcome you to the Quality Measures Reporting Max Pro Roles Training for CMS, and thank you for joining us today. So over the past few weeks, we've introduced Mac Pro as a new system that allows states, territories, and CMS to process Medicaid and CHIP initiatives, including reporting on the CMS core quality measure set, for which Mac Pro will initially be released in December 2015. So this includes child, adult, and health homes core set reporting, as well as reporting under the Maternal and Infant Health Initiative Grant Program. A really large team of individuals from across the center has been working very, very hard to develop this new system for some authorities and a new and improved system for other authorities for reporting Medicaid and CHIP quality measures to CMS and to facilitate review and analysis of state reported data by CMS. Today's session will provide some general information about MacPro, but it'll focus primarily on the different CMS user goals available in the system for quality measures reporting and analysis, as well as helping individuals determine which user roles to request. So I note that determining one user role is the critical step in getting access to the system and that there will be action steps for some of you immediately following this training. So we hope you find today's training uh, informative and look forward to introducing MacPro and specifically the user roles available for quality measures reporting and analysis in MacPro to you today. I'll now turn things back over to you, Jeanette. Thank you so much. Your presenter for today will be Marshall Nannis of Children Health Analytics who is our education, education and training and assistance um, contractor. So I will now turn it over to Marshall. Thank you so much. My name is Marshall Nanis, and I'm with Truven Health Analytics. As Jeanette said, Truven Health is the education, training, and assistance contractor for the Mac Pro system. The purpose of today's webinar is to help you understand the roles and the responsibilities in Mac Pro's quality measures reporting submission process. The call is on presentation mode to prevent background noises, and there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. CMS and training personnel are here to assist with any questions you may have at this time. Please also note that this session will be recorded. We have a full agenda for today. We'll start with a brief background on Mac Pro, then we'll discuss the rollout plan for the Mac Pro Quality Measures Reporting, followed by an explanation of the Mac Pro Quality Measures user roles and the process flows in which they are involved. The webinar will end with some information about how to get your Mac Pro role, next steps, how to obtain technical assistance for using the system, and an opportunity to ask questions. Now let's begin with a brief background on Mac Pro. Mac Pro is a web-based system for the submission, review, and management of Medicaid and CHIP initiatives, such as quality measurement reporting and state plan amendments. For some applications, Mac Pro will be a new online submission tool. For others, it will be a change from what was once a manual workflow to an electronic workflow. And for some, it will be the first time that information is collected. In terms of quality measurement reporting, Mac Pro replaces the CARTS reporting for adult core set reporting and Section 2A of the Child CARTS report. Additionally, Health Homes core set reporting will be reported for the first time using Mac Pro. Mac Pro is also the system for reporting under the Adult Medicaid Quality Improving Maternal and Infant Health Outcomes in Medicaid and CHIP grant. Mac Pro is being implemented to improve the state reporting and federal review processes, program management, and transparency. Both CMS and states will know where a submission resides, when the CMS responses do, and the status of the review. Additionally, Mac Pro supports data-driven decision-making for Medicaid and CHIP programs. This diagram represents the concept of Mac Pro as a two-way communication tool. The stakeholders around the outer circle are submitting and or obtaining Mac Pro information. 
Also, you'll notice there are two one-way arrows pointing outward at the bottom of the diagram. These represent the Mac Pro system feeding public information to healthcare.gov and medicaid.gov. The result is greater transparency because these public resources will use a single source of truth about the Medicaid and CHIP program. Let's talk about the Quality Measures Reporting Rollout Plan. The initial rollout of MacPro will occur in December 2015. As part of this rollout, webinar trainings, sessions, and written instructions are being offered on the roles available in MacPro, how to get access to MacPro, and how to submit and review a quality measures report. Today, we'll cover the first bullet and discuss the CMS and state roles available for quality measures reporting. Now, we'll review the different user roles within MacPro for quality measures reporting. A number of distinct roles have been established for CMS and states within MacPro. These roles determine in what capacity a user will employ the system. It's important to note that the user roles in MacPro differ from those that are used in CMS's other web-based systems like CARTS, MMDL, and WMS. And in some applications, this is the first time that there are roles. We'll discuss the quality measures roles and recommendations for who should hold each type of role during this presentation. This page shows the five MacPro quality measures user roles for CMS staff. Currently, CMS quality measures users can hold only one quality measures MacPro role at a time. Let's take a moment to review some of the responsibilities of CMS user roles. The first role we'll discuss is the CMS Central Office Administrator. The CMS Central Office Administrator, or CMS CO Admin, is a role for CMS Central Office staff with direct responsibility for implementing and or administering the Medicaid quality measurement programs. Individuals with this role have the ability to complete reviews, create and complete seek more information requests, browse and view quality measure submission reports, view and modify CMS user profiles, approve CMS user roles, add and update extension dates, reassign quality measures user tasks, disassociate quality measures users, and generate data reports. The CMS Contractor Central Office Administrator, or CMS Contractor CO Admin, is for CMS contractors with direct responsibility for helping CMS implement and or administer the Medicaid quality measurement programs. Individuals with this role can complete reviews, create and complete seek more information requests, browse and view quality measure submission reports, add and update extension dates, reassign quality measure user tasks, and generate data reports. The next three roles we'll discuss are for individuals who do not have an active part in reviewing state reporting, but have a professional need or interest in having access to the reports. The CMS Central Office or Regional Office, CMS CO and RO role, is for CMS staff with no direct responsibility for implementing or administering the Medicaid quality measurement programs, but who may be interested in state's reporting of measures. Individuals with this role can browse and view quality measure submission reports and generate data reports. The CMS contractor role is for CMS contractors or researchers with no direct responsibility for implementing or administering the Medicaid quality measurement programs, but have CMS-related or approved business needs to access state's measurement reporting. Individuals with this role can browse and view submitted reports and generate data reports. The CMS System Administrator, or CMS Admin, role is for CMS personnel that have no direct responsibility for implementing or administering the Medicaid quality measurement programs, but are involved with assigning and approving MacPro staff. Individuals with this role can approve or disprove the State Administrator role, approve or disprove the CMS Central Office Administrator, or CMS CO Admin role, reassign State Admin tasks, disassociate State Admins, reassign tasks for the CMS CO Admin, and disassociate the CMS CO admin. Please note that our process to obtain IDs will change over time. There may be activities on this list that the CMS admin may not be able to do initially, but will further down the road. 
This slide lists the four quality measures roles. A state user may have more than one role in MacPro, with the exception of the state system administrator. With this release, individuals with a state system administrator role can only hold that role. It's important to note that all state roles must be filled for proper workflow functionality. The state editor begins the process by creating a Mac Pro quality measures report. Individuals with this role can create quality measure submission reports, browse, view, and edit quality measure submission reports, delete not yet submitted reports, and generate data reports. State editors may concurrently hold the roles of state point of contact and state director. The State Point of Contact, or SPOC, is responsible for reviewing a quality measures report created by the state editor prior to sending it to the state director for final review, certification, and submission. Individuals with this role can browse, view, and edit quality measure submission reports, respond to seek more information requests, delete reports that have not yet been submitted, uncertify reports, and generate data reports. SPOCs may concurrently hold the roles of state editor and state director. The state director role is responsible for doing the final review on the quality measures report and then certifying and submitting the report to CMS. We do want to point out that the state director role does not need to be filled by the Medicaid director of a state. Individuals with this role can browse and view quality measure submission reports, certify and submit measure submission reports to CMS, and generate data reports. State directors may concurrently hold the roles of state editor and state point of contact. The state system administrator State Admin is an administrative role that can approve state user roles, modify state user profiles, reassign state user tasks, disassociate state users, and generate data reports. For this release, the state system administrators may not hold any other roles. Please note that the process to obtain IDs will change over time. For this initial release, state system administrators will not have to approve all initial role requests, only additional role requests from existing users. Additionally, there may be activities on this list that the state admin may not be able to do additionally, initially, but will further down the road. This diagram outlines the full submission process, from the state editor's creation to the completion of the CMS review. Let's take a look at the process, first by state activities and then by CMS. First, the state submission flow. Here is the full Mac Pro State Quality Measures Submission Reporting Submission Workflow. Let's walk through these steps for the certification process. The state editor begins by logging into Mac Pro and entering information to create the quality measures report. When completed, the state point of contact, or SPOC, receives an email notice that a report is ready for review. The SPOC logs into Mac Pro and reviews and edits the report and sends it to the state director for certification. The state director receives an email notice that the report is ready for certification. The state director logs into Mac Pro and reviews the report and can select to either deny the report or certify it. If certify is chosen, CMS receives an email notice that the report is ready for review. Next, we will go over the CMS review process. Here is the full CMS Quality Measures Review Workflow. Please note that the CMS Central Office Administ Contractor Administrator, or CMS CO Con Admin, can also perform this activity if requested by the CMS CO Admin. Let's walk through the process steps for this process. Once a report is submitted by the state, the CMS Central Office Administrator, CMS CO Admin, and or the designated CMS Contractor Central Office Administrator, or CMS Contractor CO Admin, receives an email stating that there is a state quality measures report available for review. For the purpose of this review, I will just use CMS CO Admin. The CMS CO Admin logs into Mac Pro and reviews the report. If there are questions, the CMS CO Admin will send a seek more information request to the state. If there are no questions, the CMS CO Admin will send an acknowledgement receipt to the state. Now let's talk about how to get your Mac Pro roles.
for this initial release. You will need to fill out a form to request an ID, and you will be sent a username and password. This week, you received an Excel-based Mac Pro roles template. You'll need to meet with your program, decide who should hold which role or roles, and fill out this form. Once you fill out the template, a representative from each program will send one template with all of the usernames in it to the Mac Pro help desk at the address listed on this slide by November 19th. If you have any questions while filling out the template, please contact the help desk for assistance. Here's a snapshot of what the roles template looks like. The information needed in the spreadsheet includes your name, contact information, if you are central or regional office, your manager name and department, a yes-no response to the authority or type of quality measure you'll be reporting, such as adult, child, health homes, or MIH, and the role you'd like to request. Again, we want to stress that all information must be filled out for a role request to be processed. Now let's talk about next steps. The main next step is to complete the roles template and send it to the Mac Pro help desk by November 19th. Watch your email for more training sessions and material. We'll be hosting additional sessions in the next few weeks in system demos. Written material will also be provided on how to submit reports, among other topics. Technical assistance will be available to Mac Pro users. We expect users to have questions as the Mac Pro system starts being used, especially for issues with login information, passwords, accessing Mac Pro, and viewing quality measures reports. Although there will be trainings and reference materials available to walk through the quality measure reporting submission and review processes, there are also two help desks, one to provide assistance on the Mac Pro system, and a second to help with quality measure content. To help expedite an answer to your request, here's the information that should be provided in an email request to the Mac Pro Help Desk. Your contact information, the application you're using, such as adult core set reporting, child core set reporting, health homes core set reporting, etc. Give a detailed description of the problem, including how many people are being affected by it. Specify the last screen or activity that was performed before experiencing the issue, and include the error message that appeared, and preferably a screenshot. We'll now ask the operator to open up the phone lines and give the instructions to ask questions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask an audio question, please press star 1 on your phone, then immediately record your name followed by the pound key. To ensure your question is registered, you must record your name. If your question has been answered or you would like to withdraw your question, please press star 2. Questions will be taken in the order received and we will pause momentarily to compile a list of questions. Please press star 1 to begin with the email or, or a password or an ID for the system? How, how does that work? This is Bob Krasovsky. So as the forms come in, there will be some comparison, some auditing done to ensure the, the roles are there, the folks requesting the roles are uh, on the list that we have received. And if anything is flagged during that process seems, seems to not be correct, that information will be passed on to the business owners and I, and I think the regional offices. We still need to work out that process over the next couple weeks. Uh, but the role request templates will be forwarded on to QSSI. There's a development contractor who will be creating IDs and assigning the Mac Pro roles. At the point where rollout is about to occur, uh, a message will be sent. I believe it will uh, be sent by QSSI, although it may appear to come from the Mac Pro help desk. And it uh, obviously two separate messages should be sent, one with the user ID and another with the password. And that will be sent to each of the users who have been assigned a, a user ID and uh, Mac Pro roles. Uh, and
and that, like I said, will be right around the time of the release, which is expected to occur somewhere probably in the first full week of December. Um, that's what the plan is at this point. Okay, great. Thanks, Bob. You betcha. If, if I can ask the the operator, is uh, there, there aren't that many folks on the call. Is there a way you could just open up the line for everyone and just give them one last chance to ask a question? Yes, sir. I'll go ahead and open up the lines for everyone. Just stay with me for one moment, okay? This time, all the all of the lines are open. So, uh, I, I explained the the process the, uh, of the the templates, uh, the expectation that they'll be received next week, um, and um, then what will be done with them. Any questions about the macro role? process for submitting the role request templates or anything that, that wasn't covered here. Bob, this is Jeanette James. Um, could you um, inform them that this slide will become available and how they can request a copy of this presentation? Sure. Uh, this uh, training session has been recorded Eventually, uh, soon, we will have uh, a website on the, uh, the portal page, the CMS portal page, where a lot of macro training content can be accessed. Uh, that's not ready just yet, so if anyone wants a copy of the training, they can send a, a request to the Mac Pro Help Desk. I think the uh, we did have a slide on that. Could we move the slide back to that? So uh, you, you see that there are two email addresses there. We are referring to the Mac Pro Help Desk at cms.hhs.gov. Mac Pro underscore Help Desk. Um, and we, we'll make that uh, session available to whomever needs a copy of it. Good question, Jeanette. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, Laurel, I think it's a few at this point. If there are no uh, additional questions, I think we can uh, we can end the conference for the day and give everybody 30 minutes back. So thank you, thank you everyone for attending today. Thank you. Thank you.